Welcome to Naresh, Naresh Technologies, this is Mahesh. Uh, in my previous video, I explained what is stateless widget, okay. And if you see the output of our previous example, this is the output of our previous example, we tested in Android as well as iOS. It is a stateless widget, uh, so we cannot modify the state, we cannot modify on the screen. Now, what we will do is nothing but our requirement is, we want to put one count variable we want to put, whenever user clicks a floating action button, we want to increase that count, we want to increase. So, for that what we had to do is nothing but we had to change this stateless widget, we had to change to stateful widget, we had to change. So, better what we will do is nothing but uh, we will create a one more new project, we will create better for that and we will we'll, we'll see how to create a stateful widget, we will see how to create, okay. I am creating a new flutter project, I am creating, go to file, you can see new, you can choose an option called new flutter project, specify what is the project name. I am specifying a project name called stateful underscore widget is a project name I specified. Stateful underscore widget or you can space you can specify stateful underscore app is a project name I specified, okay. Next click on finish. So, we are creating a new project we are creating called stateful app is a project name we specified. Just what we will do is nothing but to demonstrate what is stateful widget. Just we will place one plus button we will place here in place of floating action button whenever you click on that plus will increase the count variable will increase, okay. Okay, we create a project we created, but by default we are going to get one project template we will get, okay. So, what I am doing is nothing but I am removing that whole code I am removing, what is the, what are the default code we got in the project, I am removing that entire code I am removing and we will create our own widget we will create, okay. The first statement we had to write in this dot file, we had to write the import statement we had to write. By default, we, we had to import the material app, we had to import material app package, we had to import. You can write import package material dot dot. This is the first statement we had to write in the dot file. Next, so execution will be starts with the main method. So, create a main function. Under this main function, call a predefined method called what? Run app is a method name. But this run app method is expecting the widget object as input. In the previous video, uh, explained the stateless widget. In this example, we will take a stateful widget, we will take, okay. So, run app, you can specify to create a stateful widget, what we had to do is nothing but we had to create a class we had to create and specifying the class name called my widget, which is a child of extends, extends stateful widget. Create a class which is a child of what? Stateful widget. But for stateful widget, uh, we had to create two classes we had to create. For stateless widget only one class is sufficient, but for stateful widget we had to create two classes we had to create. One is a child of the stateful widget, one more thing is which is a child of state class. So, we will see here, uh, why showing the error is nothing but it is an abstract class and give this my widget object as an input parameter to the run app method, my widget. So, it is abstract class, contains an abstract method, so we had to provide the implementation for that abstract method. So, there is a method called create state is a method return type of this create state is nothing but which is expecting the state object it is expecting as an input. So, I told you already we had to create two classes we had to create in case of stateful widget. One is a child of stateful widget, one more class we had to create which is a child of state class. Now, what you have to do is nothing but you have to create one more class. I am creating, I'm creating a class called my state which is a child of extends the state class. Create a class which is a child of the state class. So, it is also an abstract class, my state is also an abstract class. So, we had to provide the implementation for this abstract method. It contains an abstract method, the state class contains abstract method called build method. Return type of this build method is nothing but widget is a return type of the build method. So, what we have to do is nothing but there will be a built in widget called material app, we will return that material app widget will return. So, here we had to write a return statement, we had to write, we had to return the object of what? Material app class object we had to return had to return the object of what? Material app class object we had to return, right. Inside the material app, inside the material app, so on the home screen, what you want to present on the home screen is nothing but we, 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 here we want to take a template we want to take. Just if you want to display a message like in our first example, you can write new text, you can write a message, you can write. Only a text will be displayed on the screen. 
But if you need the toolbar home screen and you need the floating action button, then what you have to do is nothing but we had to take a template called scaffold. Scaffold if you take, you will get it app bar or toolbar, floating action button, home screen you will get. So home screen, I am creating the object I am creating for the scaffold, I am creating the object I am creating. Home screen, we are returning the object we are returning for what? Scaffold class object we are returning. So in this scaffold, you can create an app bar, you can create the scaffold which contains the app bar as well as we had to create a, a body screen, we had body we had to create, app bar, next we had to create a body we can create, next the last thing is nothing but we can create a floating action button also we can create. So scaffold contains three sections, app bar, body and floating action button, okay. So now what we will do is, uh, we will declare one variable also we will declare. Uh, int uh, I taken a variable called count z equals to 0 is specified. So I declared a variable inside the my state class. Initially I declared the variable count is equals to 0 is specified. Okay. So now in the app bar you can specify a few properties like what is a, a background color for the app bar. You can specify these properties you can specify. Under this app bar you can specify new app bar I am creating the object for the app bar class object I am creating. This app bar contains few properties like what is a title. So I am giving a title called stateful, widget is a title. So you can create new text, you can specify it is a stateful widget, okay. Stateful widget is a app bar title I specified. If you want you can specify what is a text style, text color like these kind of properties by creating the object for the class called style, you can specify new text style, you can specify, I specified colors dot, white is a color code I specified for this, think of the default color is white color, so you do not require to specify this, okay, text style and uh, you can specify what is a font weight, like font size, I specified 30.0, I specified the font size, you can specify font weight, like whether you want to get in the bold or italic, you can specify that font weight dot, I specified bold, I specified, okay. So just if you want, you can specify alignment also, you can specify for this text, text align dot center. So on the app bar, we are displaying a title, we are displaying called stateful widget and we specified the size, we specified style, we specified alignment also, we specified for the title. If you want, you can specify what is the background color for the app bar. I am specifying the background color, uh, there will be a color called deep orange is one color code is there. I am specifying that deep orange is a color code I specified, okay. So we created a, uh, the app bar we created, a toolbar we created with the text called stateful widget. Next on the body, body, so exactly in the middle of the screen, just I want to display a label I want to display exactly in the middle of the screen. So you can create an object for center exactly in the middle of the screen, you can create one, the child element you can create that is new text. You can do the same properties, you can copy from here like what is the text you want to display, size, what is the alignment and all these properties you can configure as it is. You can copy and you can specify here, okay. And here just what I am doing is nothing but, I am taking a variable I am taking here with the dollar symbol, dollar, you can specify the variable name, we are taking a variable name called count count is a variable name we specified. So times tapped I specified the text, okay. I specified the font size called 40 is a font size I specified. So on the body we are displaying a text we are displaying call count to, ta count to times tapped is a message I am displaying, meaning initially you are going to get 0 times tapped, right. So we want to increase that count, you want to increase. Once again if you click you want to increase the count, you want to increase, like that count is going to be increased, okay. So in the body, exactly in the middle of the screen, we are displaying a text, how many times it is, button is tapped, we specified 0 times, it is tapped, we specified, okay. And the last thing is nothing but floating action button. The floating action button, what we will do is nothing but we will create a new, the floating action button. What you want to perform when the floating action button is pressed, write that code here. You can write this opening and closing bracket, you can specify what you want to perform when the floating action button is pressed, you can write that code, you can write here, okay. And next, create the object for the floating action button, new, okay. 
So as of now we specified on pressed as null we specified, later we will write the code for on pressed. Next, create the object for the icon class, new icon, and you can specify what is the icon, you can specify new icon. So you can call icons dot, they will get some predefined icons you will get. I am adding an icon called add is icon I am taking here. Okay. If you want you can specify what is the background color for this floating action button, you can specify what is the background color, I specified colors dot, same deep orange is a color code I specified for this. Okay. So app bar color code we specified deep orange, the title color code also we specified deep orange and deep orange we specified for floating action button. Now whenever you click the floating action button, what you want to perform, you have to specify here. So in the on press method, what you can do is nothing but you can create one function you can create, you can call that function you can call whenever user clicks the floating action button. So what we will do is nothing but inside the my state class, I am creating one function I am creating void, I am creating a function call update count. We created one function we created inside the my state class called update count. So here you can write count is equals to count plus 1. Every time what we are doing is nothing but we are increasing the count, we are increasing 1, 1, we are increasing the count. Now simply whenever user clicks a floating action button, we can call that function, we can call. So what is the function name increase? What is the function name? Check here once. Update count is a function. So simply you can call the function name, we can call here update count. Okay. So whenever user clicks the floating action button, the plus is a floating action button icon you are going to get. Whenever you click on the floating action button, we are calling the update count method we are calling. So count value we are updating, but we are not refreshing the screen, we are not refreshing. For that what you have to do is nothing but call a method call set state is on method is there. It is just like a refresh kind of thing. So we are increasing the count value, we are increasing. So what you have to do is nothing but we had to call the set state method we had to call. So it is going to reload the screen, will be reload again. Okay. We are increasing the count and we are reloading the screen by calling the set state method, it is going to reload the screen. What are the values there in the count, that count value will come. So first you will get the count value 0, once if you tap we are increasing the count, you will get 1. Like every time count value will be increased. Okay. So this is an example for the stateful widget, we get a stateful widget, whenever you click the floating action button, we are increasing the count value, we are increasing. Let us see here, test the application and see the output. First I am testing the app in the iOS simulator, let us see, this is a previous one. I am executing the app in the iOS simulator, okay. It will take some time to load the project. Actually we got the exception we got, why we got the exception is nothing but. So we in the create state method, we are not returning the my state object, we are not returning. So from the main method run app, we are calling the my widget class object we are creating. In the my widget class which is a child of state stateful widget. So here the create state method return type is nothing but state of the stateful widget. So we created our own state we created. We had to return that state object, we had to return return. Okay. So actually we missed this statement, we missed that's why. Uh, we got the exception we got, the application is not executed, we got the exception we got because we missed this, we are written, we are not returning the my state object, we are not returning. Okay. Now you can run this application, you can run, you can see the output, you can see. If you need this example, if you need, just go through this URL, uh, you can see a flutter notes, you can see, you can, you can see the example, you can see whatever the example you discuss, that example you can see in this URL. Okay. See here we got the output we got, we got a stateful widget is a title we specified and we got 0 times tapped is a message we got. And whenever you click, it is going to increase the count will be increased, we specified 1 time tap is 2 times tapped, 3 times tapped like that. So whenever you click the plus button every time it is going to increase the count will be increased every time. Okay. This is an example for the stateful widget. So we can update the state, we can update on the screen uh, by using what? The stateful widget. The same application you can run on the Android also you can run and you can test in the Android device also you can test. So quickly we will do that, I am executing the same application on the Android device, we will take some time to launch the application. Okay. This is very basic example to de demonstrate what the stateful widget. Okay. You can see the same application, we got the output in an Android as well as iOS. So whenever you click on the plus button, the count will be increased. So this is an example for the stateful widget, it is working fine in the Android as well as iOS, the same code, only one single code we are able to deploy on the Android platform as well as 
iOS platform that is a flutter okay uh, which is used to build the hybrid applications which can run on Android as well as iOS okay this is a very basic example for the stateful widget in the coming videos uh, we will take some complex examples like how to take input from the user how to configure the click event for a button like how to store the data in the internal storage like all these examples we will discuss in the next videos okay thank you Thank you.